Dress syndrome, also known as drug reaction with eosinophilia and systemic symptoms, is a severe and potentially life-threatening reaction to certain medications. It's a type of hypersensitivity reaction that occurs in response to certain medications, typically developing within two to eight weeks after starting a new drug, which is considerably longer than the typical drug reaction timeline. This delay can make it challenging to link the symptoms to the medication, complicating diagnosis and treatment. When someone develops stress syndrome, their immune system goes into overdrive in response to a medication. This overactive immune response leads to inflammation throughout the body, affecting various organs and tissues. The syndrome gets its name from its key features, a drug-induced reaction, an increase in a type of white blood cell called eosinophiles, and symptoms that affect multiple body systems. Now you might be wondering if there are different types of dress syndrome. While dress syndrome itself is a specific condition, it can vary in severity and the organs it affects. Some cases might primarily involve the skin and liver, while others could impact the kidneys, lungs, or even the heart. The exact presentation can differ from person to person, which is one of the reasons why diagnosing dress syndrome can be challenging. When it comes to how common dress syndrome is, it's considered a rare condition. Estimates suggest it occurs in about 1 in 1,000 to 1 in 10,000 people who are exposed to high-risk medications. Causes of dress syndrome as mentioned earlier, it's triggered by certain medications. The most common culprits include anticonvulsants, drugs used to treat epilepsy, allopurinol, used for gout, antibiotics, particularly sulfonamides, and some antiviral drugs. But why do these drugs cause such a severe reaction in some people? The exact mechanism isn't fully understood, but researchers have some theories. One idea is that certain drugs or their metabolites or breakdown products can bind to cellular proteins, creating drug protein complexes that the immune system mistakes for foreign invaders. This triggers an intense immune response. Another theory suggests that some drugs might activate specific immune cells directly, leading to the overproduction of inflammatory substances. Genetic factors also play a role in dress syndrome. Some people have variations in genes that affect how their body processes certain drugs or how their immune system responds to them. Symptoms of dress syndrome. The symptoms typically start to appear two to eight weeks after starting the causative medication, which is longer than many other drug reactions. One of the first signs is usually a high fever. People with dress syndrome often describe feeling like they have a bad case of the flu, with temperatures that can spike to 38 degrees Celsius. 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. Along with the fever, many people experience fatigue and a general feeling of being unwell. Skin symptoms are another hallmark of dress syndrome. A widespread rash is common, often starting on the face, upper body, and arms before spreading to other areas. The rash can vary in appearance, but is often described as red, itchy, and sometimes painful. In some cases, the skin might become swollen, particularly on the face. Some people report that their skin feels hot to the touch and uncomfortably tight due to the swelling. Lymph node swelling is another common symptom. People might notice enlarged tender lymph nodes, particularly in the neck, armpits, and groin. This swelling can sometimes be visible and might cause discomfort or a feeling of fullness in these areas. Internal organ involvement is what makes dress syndrome particularly serious. The liver is frequently affected, which can lead to symptoms like abdominal pain, nausea, and jaundice, which is yellowing of the skin and eyes. Some people describe a feeling of fullness or discomfort in the upper right part of their abdomen where the liver is located. If the kidneys are involved, people might notice changes in their urine output or color. They might also experience swelling in their legs and feet due to fluid retention. Lung involvement can cause shortness of breath, cough, or chest pain. In rare cases where the heart is affected, people might experience palpitations or chest discomfort. It's important to note that not everyone with dress syndrome will experience all of these symptoms, and the severity can vary widely from person to person. Some people might have a relatively mild case with mainly skin involvement, while others could develop life-threatening organ complications. Before we continue, if you have been finding the video helpful so far, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss more videos like this.
Diagnosis of Dress Syndrome Diagnosing dress syndrome can be challenging because its symptoms can mimic other conditions, including viral infections, autoimmune disorders, or other types of drug reactions. One of the key factors in diagnosing dress syndrome is the timing of symptom onset in relation to starting a new medication. Doctors will carefully review a patient's medication history, looking for drugs known to trigger dress syndrome that were started within the past few weeks or months. Blood tests play a crucial role in diagnosis. These tests can reveal the characteristic increase in eosinophils, which are a type of white blood cell that's typically elevated in dress syndrome. Other blood tests might show abnormal liver function, indicating liver involvement. In some cases, doctors might also test for specific viral infections, as dress syndrome can lead to reactivation of certain viruses, like human herpes virus 6. Skin biopsies are sometimes performed to examine the affected skin tissue under a microscope. While the findings aren't specific to dress syndrome, they can help rule out other conditions and support the diagnosis. Doctors often use scoring systems, such as the Regi-Scar criteria, to assess the likelihood of dress syndrome. These systems take into account various factors, including the extent of skin involvement, organ abnormalities, and blood test results. Treatment for dress syndrome. The cornerstone of treatment is immediately stopping the medication that triggered the reaction. However, it's important to note that symptoms can persist or even worsen for several days after discontinuing the drug due to the prolonged nature of the immune response in dress syndrome. Supportive care is crucial in managing dress syndrome. This might include intravenous fluids to prevent dehydration, fever reducers to manage high temperatures, and topical treatments to soothe skin symptoms. In severe cases, patients might need to be hospitalized for close monitoring and intensive supportive care. Corticosteroids are often the primary treatment for dress syndrome. These powerful anti-inflammatory drugs help to suppress the overactive immune response. They're typically given in high doses initially, then gradually reduced over several weeks or even months. It's important to taper steroids slowly because rapid withdrawal can lead to a flare-up of symptoms. In cases where corticosteroids aren't effective or can't be used, other immunosuppressive medications might be considered. These could include drugs like cyclosporin or intravenous immunoglobulin. However, these treatments are generally reserved for severe or resistant cases due to their potential side effects. Organ-specific treatments might also be necessary depending on which organs are affected. For instance, if the liver is severely impacted, medications to support liver function might be used. Similarly, if the kidneys are involved, treatments to support kidney function or even temporary dialysis might be required in extreme cases. Recovery from dress syndrome can be a long process. While some people improve relatively quickly once treatment starts, others might have symptoms that persist for weeks or even months. Long-term follow-up is important to monitor for any lingering effects or complications. It's worth noting that people who have experienced dress syndrome are at risk of developing reactions to other medications in the future, particularly those that are chemically similar to the original trigger drug. For this reason, careful medication selection and monitoring are crucial for these individuals going forward. The prognosis of dress syndrome varies depending on the severity of the condition, the promptness of diagnosis and treatment, and the presence of underlying health conditions. In mild cases, the prognosis is generally good, with most patients recovering fully after the offending drug is discontinued and appropriate treatment is initiated. However, in severe cases, dress syndrome can be life-threatening, with a mortality rate estimated to be around 10 to 20 percent. Complications such as liver failure, renal failure, or myocarditis can contribute to the increased risk of mortality. So, prevention is always better than cure and this is especially true for a condition as serious as dress syndrome. Now, we want to hear from you. Do you or someone you know have dress syndrome? When did you take notice of it? Share with us your experiences and opinions in the comments below. We love to hear them. Thanks for watching.